Ahoy mates, Julie here, and welcome to Monday's episode of The Voters TV. Let's kick things off this week with some fun news in our ever popular Ship of Fools segment. Ah, some fun festive boating news today. Two weekends ago, October 13th and 14th, marked the seventh running of the Goffstown, New Hampshire Great Pumpkin Way Off and Regatta. As the original brainchild of giant pumpkin grower Jim Boschman, this unique annual event has been growing in popularity ever since the first pumpkin prototype hit the water back in the autumn of 2000. These enormous floating gourds, which can range anywhere from 600 to 1,300 pounds, are an amazing sight to see, to say the least. Add in the colorful outfitting and classic costumes worn by the captains of these PVCs, that's personal vegetable craft, and the show really starts to get interesting. On the Goffstown, New Hampshire website, found at www.town.goffstown.nh.us, Photos from this year's event show that, featured in this year's 2007 regatta, were a gladiator, a fanatical garden-grown Red Sox fan, a king of um, the United States, interesting, a tropical banana boat, a birthday cake, and I don't know what that guy in the pink is meant to be, but cute as he is, he got swallowed up and his pumpkin chomped to bits by the event's pumpkin eater float. As much as the Great Pumpkin Regatta is a fun and captivating form of recreational amusement, it also plays a major role in raising funds for charitable organizations. As one insightful bystander appropriately put it, oh my gourd! Thanks to Karen Jewell for that story. Karen also sent us some other news that we've got for you in today's Yada 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 segment. The Director's Shipyard facility in Bridgeport, Connecticut is currently putting the final touches on what will ultimately be the largest privately owned catamaran constructed to date. With an overall length of 145 feet, a beam of 54 feet, and a displacement of 210 tons, four bow thrusters, two in each hole, and a mast that will stand almost 174 feet high, Project Gemini will no doubt be an impressive sight as she cruises the world's oceans. This amazing vessel is the result of the combined efforts of a yacht owner's dream, the brilliant design eye of one Van Petem Laureate Prevost, hope I didn't butcher that, the exclusive interior design talent of Michael Leach Design, and the highly skilled employees at the Director's Connecticut Shipyard. Project Gemini was such a huge undertaking that it required several different and individual blueprints throughout the assembly process for a variety of sections each of which necessitated its own respective crew. As each section evolved, it was then moved on down the line and eventually relocated to a larger building on site, where ideally all of the pieces to the puzzle are put together. Three decks, a 301 square foot flybridge, twin helm stations, a 413 square foot shaded dining and lounge area, and a hydraulic swim platform that electronically retracts from the porthole transom are just a few examples of the unique specifications that add to the yacht's allure. According to BMT Group, Project Gemini is nearing the end of the construction process at the reputable shipyard and is due for launch in the spring of 2008. To learn more, visit www.bmtyachts.com. And finally today, some fascinating boating history in our Did You Know segment. When many people think of Alexander Graham Bell, they think of his work on the modern-day telephone. But Bell had many other achievements that are often in the shadow of the telephone, including, did you know, did you know, his work on the original hydrofoil boats. Originally considered as a tool to help airplanes take off from the water, Alexander worked with partner Frederick W. Casey Baldwin in the summer of 1908 to create a reliable boat that could become foil-borne to decrease drag and resistance in water. Hydrofoil boats work on essentially the same principles of hover or air boats. Under the hull of the ship, there are wings made out of foil that are mounted on struts, allowing the hull to become somewhat airborne or foil-borne as the boat increases speed. Bell worked for nine more years on hydrofoil technology alongside an Italian inventor, Enrico Forlanini. 
By 1919, the trio of Bell, Baldwin, and Forlanini had experimented with several models and structures, including an original U-shaped hydrofoil that lifts completely out of the water, as well as an early sketch for the currently used T-foil shape, which remains fully submerged while the hull lifts. On September 9, 1919, the three men tested the HD4 hydrofoil boat, setting a marine speed record of 70.86 miles per hour, which would not be broken for 10 years. For more information on hydrofoil boats, please visit www.hydrofoil.com. And that's a wrap on this episode of The Boaters TV. Join us back here on Wednesday, and until then, safe and happy boating to you all. Take care. This episode of The Boaters TV has been brought to you by the word Zebet, which is an old three-masted vessel used in the Mediterranean. And the only word I could find beginning with an X.